morning. Um, my name is Lena Buck, and um, today I just want to share my testimony. And I think uh, testimony is really important because it just shows that God is alive, that he has a story that he's writing in every one of our lives. And in our case, you know, God is the star of the story, Jesus Christ. I hope that um, you could just glean some of the experiences I had and maybe it'll talk to you. Um, I was raised in a home that was, I mean, went to church every Sunday. Uh, Christianity or being in church is a tradition in my family. It goes back actually a century ago. Uh, I was always told by my mother that our family was especially blessed because my great-grandfather was a Christian martyr. He actually heard from missionaries that were sent to North Korea, um, and he completely embraced the gospel. He changed his whole life, um, became a pastor himself, and as a result of his faith, during the Japanese occupation, he was martyred and killed and tortured, I believe. We don't know for sure for his faith. So that was, to me, was such a legacy. And that, even though it was a wonderful thing, I believe God calls us through families, I think it was to me, um, I, I trusted my, that my faith rested in his sacrifice, that he sacrificed and therefore my generation was blessed and I was a beneficiary of that. So in a sense, I had a wrong idea about salvation. Um, another thing growing up for myself, um, I grew up in a, in a culture where, you know, being in a Korean church and... Um, my father was a very authoritarian Korean man. I'm not saying bad things about Koreans, but um, I definitely had this culture of works, being good, you know, to be good. You never get anything unless you work for it. And I think that's just an American uh, culture thing too, uh, works oriented. But in my case, my father was extremely strict and he gave me the idea, another wrong idea that um, I had to be good in order to be worthy. So I remember I was probably eight or nine, and he was upset about me uh, doing something wrong. I think I didn't do my homework or something. So he got extremely angry, and he does have temper tantrums, and he would just say, Lena, grab your three best dresses right now. My mom was out working, so he made me go to the closet and pick three of my favorite dresses, and I was terrified. I didn't know what he was going to do. So I just put all these clothes in my bag, and he just put me in the car, and we started driving. This is in Chicago, and we were just driving, driving for a long time, and finally we got to some suburb where nice houses were there, and he, he said, get out of the car. You need to go and knock on someone's door because um, you're, we don't want you, and you need to find a new family. And I remember being just terrified, like, I don't, I don't know what to do. And I, being a strong-willed person, I wouldn't go, and I was terrified of what would happen if I left the car, and he was pulling me out, and I, I wouldn't go. But I think he was trying to scare me. Um, I think he was trying to teach me a lesson about obedience. And it didn't stop there because he drove down some highway and he, he made me get out of the car and he drove off, you know, in the middle of this big highway, interstate. And I was so afraid and alone. I felt so abandoned. Um, but he reversed the car and came back and got me. But I think the, the damage was done. He, um, he, in essence, gave me the idea that I was worthless, that unless I did everything right, I was worthless. So growing up in that culture... And being um, abandoned in some ways, because my father eventually did leave our family, I felt that I had to be so good. I had to be perfect and work hard in order to have some worth in this world. So I took at it. I really, uh, I was a good girl. I, I studied hard. I obeyed my mom, and I could not wait to get out of the house. And when I went to college, everything was different for me. I, I worked very hard there. And it was my sophomore year in college when I decided uh, that I chose my major. Um, I had made Dean's List. I had a whole checklist of things that I wanted to do. But uh, and I had a lot of friends. And one friend in particular, his name was Fred. He, uh, I knew him from high school. He confronted me out of the blue and said, Lena, you're a really good friend of ours, but I have to tell you that if you're lukewarm, the Bible says God will spit you out of his mouth. And I could not believe, first of all, that he would confront me in such a personal way. I just felt that was just unbelievable that he would see this in me. And secondly, that he actually knew what was going on in my heart, that I did have this gaping hole in my life that I was trying to fill with accomplishments, with activities, with friends, with approval. And it was just this empty chasm that wasn't being filled. And that's what I was driving me. And I thought about what he said, and I was afraid, but I, and I'm thankful he said that because it made me think, 
wow, that's actually a missing part of my life. Thank you. I'm going to put that in my life. So I started to get God into my life, to fit him in. So I went to church. I joined a Bible study. I, what else did I do? I read the Bible. And I remember reading the New Testament in a week, just ripped through it like it was nothing. And I'll tell you, it went in one ear and out the other because I don't remember what I read. But what came out of that was this desire to know him more, you know, know more about him, just know him. So I ended I end up going to this retreat. It was an university Christian fellowship retreat called Chapter Camp. And there I wasn't with my friends. I didn't have any distractions. I was all alone. And I was confronted with a Bible verse, Romans 3.23. Maybe some of you know, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I just realized that Jesus, even though I'd grown up knowing that Jesus died for my sins, that it was actually my sin that he died for. I never thought I was a sinner. I thought I was a good person. I thought God graded on a curve, you know, and I was in the top 20% at least. So I was so struck by that verse, but the verse continues and says that, but are justified freely by his grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. It just hit me that here I was trying to make myself worthy um, to, to have all these accomplishments, but it was the free gift of God that brought me back, that made me worthy. I did feel worthless, but there's a big difference between worthless and unworthy. I was unworthy of this free gift, but he gives it, he gave it to me freely. And when you're confronted with that, I think that you have to make a decision. And I was sitting on the fence. So I just made a decision. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what it means to be a born again Christian, but God, I just know that if you love me, if you accept me as I am, I want you in my life. And I, I made that plunge. And I have to say that my testimony doesn't stop there, because oftentimes people say, okay, that's the end of the testimony. But things just started happening fast. Things changed right away. Immediately, I felt this immense sense of joy. Just this, this, this gaping hole in my heart was filled. I felt this peace that does transcend all understanding. Um, all the things I've been looking for, it was just comp I felt joy. I felt peace with God. A second thing that happened was... Um, couldn't stop talking about Jesus. I really I was telling my mom and my sister. I thought I was crazy. Um, I told my friends, and it was just, it was contagious. I could not stop. And the third thing that happened right away was that when I was reading the Bible, it just came to life. I'd read it before in such a, a speedy fashion, but now it was just in 3D. It was coming to life. I felt the Holy Spirit was equipping me to understand scripture that I'd never understood before. And I do believe when you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit, he resides with you. He gives you the ability to believe, to, to actually take the scriptures and to understand them. So that happened right away. Um, but I would like to say that ever since being a Christian, that life is perfect. Um, and I think all of you probably know that it's not. It's very difficult because what happens is when you make peace with God, there is peace. Um, there, you have conflict. There is conflict in every story, right? And there was conflict that I had with the world, with my family, with um, my, the workplace that I was working in, um, with friends and the culture. And we just learned this in Bible study, we we're talking about it, with conflict comes opportunities to grow. And as a new Christian, I did learn um, that, yes, I could be a Christian in the business world. I didn't have to be like everyone else. I could stand out like a sore thumb. I could say what, that I, I'm a Christian and not be embarrassed. But God gave me so many opportunities to grow through that. I can't tell you how many times um, I had an opportunity to share with people at the workplace. People that really were hungry for Christ, just wanted to hear that Jesus is alive. Um, people that you would never expect. And I remember I, have a, I had an assistant who um, was close to me, but she was devastated one day. She came in crying. And I said, what's wrong, April? And she said, oh, I broke up with my boyfriend, and it's, she was living with him. And I said, let's go to my office. And we came in, and we shut the door. And I said, can I pray for you? And she said, yes. So I prayed for her. And something just, she just looked at me afterwards and she said, Lena, I've never had anyone pray for me before. And I could see in her eyes, it was true. No one had ever prayed for her. And it made me realize as a Christian that I can pray for people that have never, ever been prayed for. And it just really was so powerful for me to believe that power that we have to pray, to bring people and lift them before God. Um, and 
I also say that as a Christian, there's a lot of conflict spiritually. The enemy is against you. You have crossed over from one camp to the next, and now you are um, waging war. And the enemy was definitely working. And I've had experiences when I did missions work and short-term missions work in Africa where I was tormented by a lot of fear, a lot of fear. And a couple people on my missions team actually had these re re recurring dreams that would keep coming back. I was one of them. And in this dream, I, there was something evil just waiting for me and just saying, like, you know, you're not, not going to do anything here. And you're, um, everyone knows that you're just a phony or something like that. My deepest fear was really revealed. And I remember just every night just keeping the lights on because I was afraid to go to sleep. And I would pray about it. Please help me not to have this dream. But it wasn't until um, I was memorizing the book of Philippians with my partner and I uh, went to sleep again, terrified, but in my deep sleep, I could hear my voice shouting or calling out, therefore, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue, tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It was like a trumpet, and that dream just stopped, and I never had a single nightmare. Again, I wasn't fearful. It was just, it taught me that as Christians, we have the word of God, and it's so powerful. It is the sword of the Spirit. And to memorize it, I'm thankful for Awana because, you know, these kids are learning how to um, have that strength, that power in their subconscious, even when they're sleeping. So that is so powerful, the power of scripture. Um, and I'd say that another conflict that we have when we, as Christians that I've experienced is just that there's a conflict within ourselves because we're still sinners and we still have our fleshly desires, our goals, our dreams. And sometimes our dreams don't work out or things that we think should happen don't. Um, and we, for me, I was, I'm one of those strong-willed people that you, as parents, probably hear about it, realize it's how it's a parent. I have a couple strong-willed kids myself. But I had such a will, like a drive to do certain, certain things. And I think God has been really teaching me that I need to be poor in spirit sometimes. And that's when he comes in and he, he does the work. You know, I think sometimes I uh, struggle with trust, trusting him. But I will say that over the last several years, it's probably been the hardest just trusting him because I have six kids and in, in essence, I am raising them by myself and God has been so good. I can testify that he has never, ever let me down. When I needed him, when I needed, um, when I was worried that I would miss something, that I would miss something in my parenting, he would come in through maybe another person, through a Bible lesson, through this church and God has stood in the gap where I could never have filled. So I just hope that as, um, for those of you maybe, You've been a Christian your whole life, or maybe you were like me, and you had you were in the sin of unbelief, maybe believing that God was a certain way when, and putting Him in a box. I really encourage you that that don't. Um, God is so good; He's so good, and He has not forgotten you. If you feel that that He's maybe abandoned you, or that you're unworthy, or you're not, you've done something in your life that He could never forgive you for. Those are all wrong ideas. It's not from the Bible. So, um, you know, we are overcomers. You know, Christ died for us that we might overcome all these things. And I think that sometimes we have things in our life that are dead. You know, it could even be our faith. Our faith is stagnant or dead. But Christ came to raise things from the dead. And he lives today to intercede for us. So I really believe that we think that Jesus, I used to think Jesus was just a wonderful shepherd with the lambs and, you know, real cozy and everything, but he is powerful and he's interceding for us as we speak. So um, I'm hoping that some of you can share your testimony too, because I love hearing stories about what God is doing in other people's lives. And just recently I celebrated a birthday and I, I felt so old and my kids were saying, oh mom, you're not old, you're not even halfway through your life. And I thought, oh Lord, <laughs> I just don't even know how you can do this for, for you know, it's just it's hard, but I hope that, especially those who have been a Christian longer than I have, that you would share your story because it's such a love story of how God, um, he just takes us one by one. He calls us through families, but he really calls us one by one and he has an amazing story, an amazing adventure for all of us. So thank you for, for listening.